up. You guys ready to shut this out good? You guys are rock this? Thank, you guys are amazing. Thank you. Um, you know, we save we saved somebody really special to, to kind of close this out today. I'll tell you a quick story. Um, I know there's a lot of people still coming in, but we, so Trent and I uh, happened to go to a Tony Robbins event together. Where actually, we didn't go together, we met there. Tony made sure we met and we sat next to each other in this little group and you know, I'm just next to this cool dude, good looking guy, dreads, having a good time. And we just ended up ch chatting and we just hit it off and became great friends. So I go home and I, I said, well, let me see what he does. And I start following his videos and I'm like, oh my God, these are amazing. But I'm not the only one who thinks so, obviously, with millions of people watching. And it just, the, the, the spirit of growth, the spirit of where I'm at in my life, I just wanted to, he's already got this great audience, but more people need more Trent. That's just the way I thought about it. So we've done everything in our power to help Trent create a course, get more exposure. I'm helping him right now get the best literary agent on the planet to write his next book, which is going to be a blockbuster. You'll see it all over. Um, Trent is just one special human being, but here, here's the stuff you don't see. You see a video and you, you see an ex-NFL player and, and you hear his inspiration, but this man lives this experience every day. He's an incredible dad who coaches football and just has, he's got a brand new little girl at home and he left that little girl to come here to be with you guys just to share and inspire just because I asked him. So he's doing this from his heart. So when he comes out in a minute, I don't want to just give a good reception. I want to rock the house when he comes out. But what I... What I'd like to do is, I know we had a video. Can we play that first video of Trent's real quick and then I'll bring him out. I've learned this about life. The first step to being unhappy is trying to please everybody else. I mean, what's the point of gaining the world's approval if that game means you lose yourself? It doesn't add up. So why do we care so much about the opinions of others that could care less about us? I care so much to be liked, and why? Just to impress people who could care less about my life? Just to impress people who magnify my flaws, judge my imperfections as if mistakes aren't a part of us all? As if we all never fail? We all struggle. And it doesn't make you better because you hide yours well. It doesn't make you better because you act like you got it together. Because we both know if your walls could talk, they would say something different than what you let the world see. So crucify me, shame my name, pick me apart, but I'm through fearing your commentary because only God can judge me. And that's not an excuse, that's the truth. But will you understand that hating on others only means you aren't working on you? Work on who you are, because that's the person you're responsible for. And exposing someone else's battles won't do a thing to help you win your war. Giving pain won't heal yours, and it's crazy that it's imperfect people who we pretend to be perfect for, who we hide our purpose for because we're so afraid to be labeled fake. Take it from me. Just because you made some past mistakes doesn't mean your future can't be great. Believe that. Ignore the hate. God forgives and that's a fact. And to the people criticizing someone else's path, well, I guess you forgot where God met you at. I guess you forgot that you got a past too. But don't you forget this. God is my final judge, not you. I'm not here to live for you. I'm not here to please you. So if you get high off of making other people feel low, then feel free, pick me apart. Because at the end of the day, your opinions, your hate, your criticism can't stop this purpose. Because God knows my heart. Can no hater stop God's favor. Remember that. It all starts with you. It's rehab time. Let's get it. Guys, let's stand up and give a warm welcome to Trent I was waiting for this moment, right? How are y'all? Ah, that's crazy. Right. 
I appreciate the love, I really do. Like, that's, that's amazing, I really do appreciate it. But I want y'all to know this off top. Like, God is my reason, he uses me, all right? Re realize that. Whether you believe or not, that's just my beliefs. I'm not telling you what to believe or what not to believe, but I can't hide that because I know what God did for me. First of all, give it up for Dean and, uh, and Brendan and Ethan for this, yeah. This is an incredible event. Um, you know, when he asked me to be a part of this, I mean, I met Dean, he told you the story and it's just how, how worlds connect and it's just crazy and I'm just honored to be a part of this with everybody who shared the stage. I mean, I got here Friday night, but I uh, trust me, I looked at all the videos from all the speakers up here, they're incredible. So to be on this stage, it's really surreal for me. And if you never heard me speak before watching my videos, I apologize right now because I'm just, I just speak from my heart. And so if I go all over the, all over the place, excuse me, but I really wanna hit you in your chest. And I really want to step on your toes today, yeah. honestly, because I, I get it. I get it. You might not like it, but I'd rather you leave out of here and be like, I don't like Trent no more. I'm going to follow him on social media and everything, right? <laughs> That's how you know somebody doesn't like you, right, when they don't follow you. That's like when it gets real, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather you do that than for you to stay here in here and clap and say yeah and rah, rah. And um, I'm going to tell you, with rehab time, to make sure y'all paying attention, I'll ask y'all, if y'all feel that, y'all just say, yup, can y'all can y'all feel this? Yeah. All right, good. Just making sure I'm on point with that. But I would rather you leave out of here because to me, a friend, somebody who cares about you, and I'll paint this picture right now, right here. If you were my friend, right, and I'm walking off this stage or a cliff, I hiked Mission Peak yesterday. Lord, it was a mission. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm probably going to need a, a, a seat here in a minute. My cab muscles are, are cramping up, right? It's terrible, but it's awesome at the same time. But if I had a blindfold, I was blind, I couldn't see, and I'm walking off the stage on this cliff, and you're my friend, what are you gonna tell me to do? Stop common sense, right? But what if you really didn't like me? Like you really like hated such a strong world, but you really disliked me. What would, you, what would you tell me? Right? Or what? Or say nothing. I want you to think about that. And so a lot of times in our life, we have, I'm gonna talk about know your circle and things like that, but a lot of times in our life, we have people that tell us nothing. And with me, I've been there. I've been that friend. I've been the friend that, that happened to where I was destructed in my life and my so-called people around me didn't say one word. And so for me, I really tell you, even if it's uncomfortable, I really tell you, hey, stop, chill out. Don't go there because that's destruction heading for you. So I like to step on your toes. So the truth might hurt, but I promise you this, it always helps. And what I need you to do in here today, this is not about me. It's not about no speaker that came up here. It's about you. It's your life, your responsibility. I can inspire you, motivate you all that you want, but until you're sick and tired of being sick and tired with where you're at, until you really want to grow, until you really want to take your life to the next level, it's not going to happen until you want to do it. And just to give you a lot of background about myself, I guess brief background, I don't want to bore you too much, I want to get into this, I got an hour up here. But I played in the NFL, you heard that story. I have five million followers, all of that, if you know me, you know I can care less about that. Because likes don't mean nothing because I never did it for the likes. I never did it for fame, I never did it for money because I had that before and I was the most lost in my life. So a lot of times we wanna do success and fame and money, there's nothing wrong with growing your life, but that's not a reason to do something that you wanna do. Because if you don't have that, what's gonna happen? I remember when I was speaking, when I first started to speak and it would be like this row and those people would be my family and my friends, that's it. And if I would've believed that this wasn't the purpose for my life. I would have quit. Numbers sometimes do lie. They say numbers don't lie. Numbers sometimes do lie. Numbers that tell you that you ain't making an impact. My whole goal was to reach one. How I got to five million every day in my videos, every day when I come to speak, I'm not trying to reach the whole room. If I do, great, but I'm trying to change one life because that's when my mission is done. You change one, you can reach many. Think about that. But my career, I started playing football since I was five years old and I want to paint this picture. Maybe you haven't played sports. But you had everything. For some of you guys, it's a relationship that might have failed, a dream that you might have had, but mine was football, it was my everything. That's all that I ever knew. Went to college at Baylor. Baylor was struggling back then, and not the Baylor that you see now, even though we're going through a lot right now, but they're not the Baylor that you see now. Blessed enough, I got a full, I got a full athletic scholarship to Baylor. Blessed enough, I went to the NFL, and this is kind of when my downtime, my, my downfall really happened in my life. Just imagine you working all of that. You're supposed to be a fourth or fifth round draft pick and you don't get that call. And to some of you, it might not seem like a lot, but in my first mindset, first thing I said to myself, wow, I'm not good enough. And a lot of us do that. An obstacle challenge comes in our life and the first thing we say is I'm not good enough because we tie our worth and we tie everything we are to what this world thinks. 
Don't let what the world thinks take you from your truth. But at that time, I wasn't thinking about that. So I go into the Indianapolis Colts, play with Peyton Man. You might know that guy, all right? Right after they won the Super Bowl, had a great preseason. I got cut, made the practice squad. And if you don't know about the NFL, it's, it's a business. It's a job. It's a nine to five, straight up. They cut me. I drove all the way. I don't know if you ever drove from Indianapolis to Texas, but it's a long drive, especially after you got fired. You have a lot to think about. <laughs> Y'all can laugh now. If Y'all were laughing, I would have been kind of like, no, laugh at that. <laughs> but I got back home. As soon as I got back home, two days later, they called me back to tell me to come back. So my life was getting unbalanced very quick. But instead of turning to what I knew, instead of working harder, instead of grinding, instead of doing the things I knew, I turned to things in the world that filled me up for the moment. I can go to drug addiction, all those things I turned to. They gave me a temporary fulfillment. I filled myself and I wondered why I was empty again. You ever had a, a cup with a tiny hole at the bottom of it? You fill it up and what happens? Eventually it becomes empty. Even if it's a slow leak, it will come empty again. That's what I was doing. I was trying to fill myself up with things that weren't permanent. I was going to, whether it be clubs, VIP, mean celebrities, thinking I really made it when I just was on practice squad. I was trying to live that lifestyle. I was trying to fake it to make it, like a lot of people do. I tell people now, faith it till you make it. Don't sit here and fake it, because eventually the real you will show up. So I got cut from Indianapolis. I went to Seattle. Same exact situation. Seattle was even worse. I love the Seahawks as a different uh, general manager now, I guess, but I didn't like that guy. Hope he's not watching this. But I went to Seattle, the same thing. I got cut, made practice squad. But this is when it really happened for me when I hit my down point. So I, they cut me. I got back home. I got a phone call. And it was a 206 number, which is Seattle. And they told me to come back. Hey, Trent, I was like, well, can I come back tomorrow? They're like, no, you can't come back tomorrow. You got to come back now. We need you for tomorrow's practice. I was like, okay, whatever. I drive from Dallas to Fort Worth, pack my bags, get on the plane, tell everybody, tell my family, my friends, put it on Facebook. You know, you got to let the world know. Do everything like that. I get to the airport. And I get a call, a 206 number, I'm like, who is this? Maybe it's one of my old teammates calling me. Pick up the phone, hello, Trent, have you, have you got on the plane yet? No, good, we changed our mind. And so at that point, I hit my rock bottom. I said, forget everything. Went to Washington, my life started to change when I got with the Redskins, but I had a bigger purpose in my life then, but I hit a down point. Two situations happened that changed my life, that got me on the right track of what you see with rehab time today. One, the birth of my son. And I want to tell everybody in here that's a parent, you a leader, man. Your kids are going to watch what you do. So it don't matter if you're successful in the world, if you ain't successful in your household. Straight up, I want you to understand that some people just work, 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 but they ain't there for their kids. I'm not telling you not to go hard and provide, but if you ain't providing T-I-M-E to them, they don't care how much money you put in their pocket. And for me, seeing my son, the first thing I told my son when he was born, he's a baby, he can't talk back, right? But such a horrific, beautiful scene. Right? The birth of a child, if you haven't seen it. <laughs> so I see him and I said, Tristan, I don't want you to grow up to be like me. And for me to tell my son that, that hurt me to my core. Because regardless, my son, until he can make his own decisions, is going to follow my path, is going to follow my lead. The first view of relationships is from your kids is you. We plant seeds in our kids daily. We wonder why we have these cycles and cycles and cycles and these generational curses because it starts with us. Mindset, it's us. So what are you putting out to your kids? And not just this, but what does your life say? And not just with your kids and your whole entire life because a lot of people talk it, but few people live it. And so immediately I say, you know what, I'm a leader. And every one of you in here is a leader. You don't need no platform to be a leader. Somebody at some time, somewhere is watching what you do. It's studying what you're doing. The people's lives you're going to affect the most might not say a thing to you. So what is your life putting out will be my question to you. And that's, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions today because I want you to think and dive deep. I don't know the answer to it, but you do. The second situation that happened was my college roommate committing suicide. So when you see my videos at 3 and 4 in the morning about suicide, it comes from a real place. I mean, just imagine somebody that's your friend, best friend, committing suicide. I placed so much guilt on my life because I felt like I wasn't there for him. And at that time, I would start to live rehabish. I wasn't all the way rehab time. I was still 
one foot in and one foot out, hokey pokey. But it hurt my heart that he was going through these things and I placed all this guilt on me. because, like, man, my own boy can't call me. I'm here for everybody else, but he can't call me. And I was out clubbing or partying when I got the phone call that he had just killed himself. But one thing that changed my life was realizing that what Ant would want me to do. So rehab time started from him. I made a promise to him that I'm going to make sure I'm there for people. And I don't want anything in return. All the accolades and all the other stuff, that just comes with it. But I'm going to be there for people. When I first started rehab time, I would open up my, I can't do it no more. But I would open up my phone line and tell people to call me and text me. Snapchat, I do it all the time. And I talk to people genuinely. Don't expect anything in return because I dedicated that to him. And today in my life, he's more alive than ever. You talk about a strong why when people talk about a why. That's a why that I won't quit. What's yours? What's the reason why you live every day? What's the reason why you wake up every day? What's the reason why you breathe? What's the reason why you won't quit? What's the reason why you go hard? What's the reason why you push through? What's your why? What's your reason? And a lot of times I ask people this question, they don't know. But once you know that, can't nothing stop you but you. The biggest war you're going to face, where's my clicker? I'm, a, I'm already going, I forgot about this. <laughs> the biggest battle you're going to face, right? I talk about reality a lot. And I'm going to talk about three things, reality, release, and repair. And I'm going to give you time at the each section to really talk to a person next to you and really implement this and embed this in your mindset. But I always tell people this. You will never win your war, whatever that war is, by running from your battles. One thing we got in common in here, I don't know if you've seen the video, we all got a struggle. I don't care who you are in here, I don't care if you've been on this stage or not. We all have something that we're working on, we're trying to better. And a lot of times we run from it. A lot of times we hide from it. But I, wanna, I want you to make a true decision, a real decision, which means you cut off any other possibility with going back. You cut off that rope bridge and you burn that bridge. Make a real decision to step up and fight for whatever it is that you want out of life, for your worth, for your purpose, whatever it is, for love in this world. Because a lot of people have opinions, but nobody has solutions. A lot of people, especially in this world, what's going now, can easily go on social media and place their opinion, 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 but nobody wants to work to offer a solution. So what's going to be yours? What's going to be your why? I want to talk about three things right quick in this section. I want y'all to say it with me. Number one, respect the opportunity. Respect the opportunity. Say, yup. All right, cool. Y'all still with me. Number one, in reality, respect the opportunity. Let me paint a reality picture for you real quick. As most of you know, I don't know, does anybody have Siri in here right now? Right? Team iPhone, where we at? Right? If you picked up Siri, you can probably, this, uh, this, uh, is, uh, does Samsung have a person? What's her name? Huh? I know like the Amazon Echo is like, I forgot her name, right? Alexa, right? Yeah. It's, it's what? Katera? Huh? Cortana? Okay. But if you ask this question, to get back serious, I'm, if you ask this question, how many people died today? She'd tell you 150,000 people. 150,000. Think about that. And one on one, you. And so many times we wake up every single day complaining. We wake up every single day feeling sorry for ourselves. I'm sorry this hurts you. I don't care what you're going through. You can get through it. That's why I'm talking to you like this because I know how strong you are because you're in this event that a lot of people wouldn't come to for three days. So I know your mindset, but stop feeling sorry for yourself. This world don't owe you nothing. The people that hurt you, they don't owe you nothing. I get it. But until you start pointing a thumb at yourself and stop doing this because we're so quick to pass blame, it's their fault, it's his fault, it's, it's my relationship, it's my, it's my teacher, it's this, it's that. I was the same way with my parents when I got cut. I was like, you didn't make me fast enough, y'all's DNA, right? It's y'all's fault. <laughs> I was very bitter. I turned into a hater. I'm gonna, remind me to give y'all the definition of a hater later, all right? I think y'all will like it. But until I started taking responsibility and pointing the thumb at myself, everybody do this. Say it's on me. It's on me. Don't say it if you don't mean it. Say it's on me. It's on me. I like that. I like that. There we go. Give her a yup. Yeah. yeah. I like that. But until I start pointing the thumb at myself, my life stayed the same. 
As long as you play, place the responsibility in somebody else's hands, you give them the power or that situation to control your life. So every single day, respect the opportunity that you have for life. You know what a blessing is? A blessing is not your car. A blessing is not your house. Those are great, but a blessing is waking up and breathing. See, feel that? Put your hand over your chest for that heartbeat. That's a blessing everybody can get this morning. I got a chance. Anybody ever been to Fiji before? I got a chance to go to Fiji. And the, the most incredible people in the world, third world country, right? They smile like, bula, bula. Like they're smiling at everything, right? I'm like, gosh, y'all are so happy, right? But I was like, how are y'all so happy in a third world country? I had a conversation with a guy named Eli. I told Eli, I always shout him out because he gave me some wisdom. I said, this doesn't make sense. And we were eating at the beach and he was our waiter and I was about to throw a lot of food away. And he sat there and laughed. He said, oh, you Americans. I'm like, what? You know, I kind of took offense to that. And he said, no, nah, don't take, not like that, Trent. But he's like, you're about to throw this away. He said, you view this as trash. But a lot of us, whether it's a water bottle, I got to play rugby with a lot of the kids out there. They were using a water bottle to play rugby using certain things. He said, everything you view as trash, we view as treasure. He said, I found appreciation in everything, in every little thing. He said, the problem with America, and I'm just going off my observations, he said, is that you're always wanting more. And he said, I'm not talking about the more to make you a better you. I'm not talking about the more to progress, but you're always wanting more. More, 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 more. He said, you know what that's teaching you? To not appreciate what you have. A lot of our prayers are, God, give me more. God, do this. God, do that. I'm like, God's probably like, man, I'm not your genie. Like, what are you going to do for me? More of this and more of that. My prayer, when my life changed to my prayers changed, I stopped asking God to give me more. I said, God, you know what? Allow the will that you have for my life, whatever it is. I'm going to submit my life to you. Take me where you want to take me, even if it's uncomfortable, like standing on the stage with my biggest fear with speaking at a point. Even if it's uncomfortable, I'm willing to do your will because I owe my life to you, and that's just my beliefs. But he said appreciation is key. He said when you learn to appreciate everything you have, everything, even the smallest little things, you'll realize that you have everything that you need. So what in here are you failing to appreciate? That's right there in your face. Your kids, the house you live in, the car, the job that you have. A lot of people don't have that. So I want you guys to make me a promise to find appreciation even in the little things, even if it's just breath, even if it's just legs to walk on. Because you don't know how many people are praying to be. You know what? There's so many people praying to be in your position. Your complaints are simply blessings to other people. If y'all feel that, say, yup. Yeah. If y'all feel that, say, yup. Yeah. Number two is control what you can control. When we talk about stress and we talk about depression, a lot of times when we talk about anxiety, all these things, when we talk about fear, we're always trying to control the things that we can't, right? I believe in life, and this is just my beliefs. I'm sure it's other things that you can't control, but for me, it's two things that you really can control. Y'all want to know what it is? Yeah. You're supposed to say, yup. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Number one, you control what you give. Nobody can control your effort. Nobody can control the love that you give. Nobody can control the support that you give. That is between you and guess who else? God and yourself. Nobody else can control that. That's in your hands. Number two is you can control what you accept. And I love this one. A lot of times we walk out just accepting what the world gives us. Oh, you're not going to be this. You're not going to be that. Trent, you're not going to be a speaker. You have teds and uh, dreads and tattoos. You never went to Toastmasters. You never took this. You never did that. You're not going to be a speaker. Oh, Trent, you're not going to be an NFL player. That only happens to certain type of people. I've heard that my whole entire life, what I'm not going to be. But what I knew what I was going to be, didn't, that didn't, didn't allow me to get phased by what they thought. When you know your truth, who cares what they think? Opinions don't matter, which I'm going to get into in a second. So stop accepting what this world gives you and start giving the greatness that God has placed in your heart to this world. Give it to this world. Everybody here has a seed of greatness. And some of you might be like, Trent, I don't. Yes, you do. You just haven't unwrapped it yet. On Christmas time, you unwrap your gifts. On your birthday, you unwrap your gifts. How come when it comes to your life with the talents that you have, the gifts that you have, everything about you, how, comes we, how can we leave those wrapped? Why? Because we're afraid that we're going to fail? Fail your way to success. Fail your way forward. What's failure? Failure is only when you stop trying. 
The reason I got here today because I failed my way here, because I learned my lessons. So control what you can control. You can't control how people talk about you. You can't control how people treat you. Only thing you can control is how you treat other people. If y'all feel that, say, yup. Yeah. Say, yup. Yeah. And the third thing before we get into our make it happen part, which is like a minute for you guys to talk to your neighbor. I know some of you might not like talking to your neighbor. Hopefully you do. We're going to do this at the end of every section real quick for a minute. But before we get into that, I got a quick story real quick. And you guys can laugh about it now because it's like four years old. But um, has anybody ever drowned before or got close? Wow. No, nobody can swim in here too much, right? <laughs> Definitely not taking lessons from y'all or swimming with y'all. But I've been there. Has anybody ever did a mud run before? Right? Yeah, I did that. I did Spartan Beast and all that mud run. What it is, you run through mud for like three or four miles, this mud run actually, and it really hurts. It's tiring, right? But I want to do it. So I was coaching a group of people. I worked at 24 hours when I was trying to progress after football, which took a very humbling process for me. But I worked at 24 hours and I told everybody, let's get prepared. You know, let's do this mud run. Let's sign up. We had like 100 people. And we all did it. And so me being an athlete, I'm like, everybody's looking at me like, oh, Trent's going to kill it. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to kill it. But in the back of my head, I'm like, three and four miles to a sprinter is like a marathon, you know? So when I get tired, my back locks up. I start running like this, right? It just, it's just ugly. Form goes downhill. So I run this more run the first one, and I don't complete it. My back locks up. I have spasms, and I make an excuse, whatever. So the next one, I'm like, I'm going to finish no matter what. Like, they're not going to be clowning me. So I prepared for this next mud run. Make a long story short, came in third place. But at the end of this mud run was this zip line, right? You had to climb up, it was very high. It's this zip line. And I get up there and like in my mind, I'm thinking how tired I am because I'm exhausted. I gave my everything. In my mind, I'm like, maybe I shouldn't do this, but if I get down from here, what are people gonna think? And they're gonna call me scared and a coward, all that. So I'm standing up here. I gotta let them know about that light. Three things I didn't observe. Number one, how high it was. <laughs> Four things, actually. No, number two, how tired I was. Number three, how cold the water was. And number four, how far the swim was, right? So I get on the zip line, I drop in, and as soon as I hit, soon as I hit the water, I'll never forget this. As soon as I hit the water, I catch a, it's freezing. I catch a full body cramp. Has anybody ever caught a full body cramp before? Right, you can't say nothing but no and yes, right? You're like, all right? So I'm trying to swim with doggy paddle. I'm trying my best, right? Just swimming, whatever. And I'm not, it's not going too well. And so I knew right then that I'm not going to make it, but I was too cool to like ask for help. I was like, nah, I got to try to push it. So this other guy comes behind me. And I'm like, okay, cool. He's swimming. He's looking good. Like, I'm like, he's like Mike, Michael Phelps. So he's going to help me. So I'm like, help, help. He looks at me. It's like, I guess he, right? I'm like, dang, it's like that. I was looking for him after the race too. I'm just playing. And so I see this, and so the guy goes, and I'm like, okay, maybe he wants to beat his world record, you know? And so at that point, my cool help became a little concerned help. <laughs> so it's like, help, help. And it's people around that, I had to ask for forgiveness for this, because it's people around that, that knew me. Friends. One person had a camera. Yeah, y'all can laugh now for real. I'm, I'm over it. You know, and it's just... It's just crazy because we live in a society where we're, before we help, we're so quick to try to go viral or to post something. And so I was like, well, the people who work here surely are going to help. They just look and point. So at that point, I'm thinking I'm about to die, to be honest with you. And I was like, God, I don't want to go out like this. I was swimming with all I could. Then my help became I'm about to die. Help, <laughs> help, help. help. Nobody came. So I prayed to God, and I'm not going to lie, I don't know if this happens before you, I don't know, but I had a peace I never had before in my life. And some just told me, Trent, just push up one more time. So I kept going down and under. I push up, and this guy, he has boots on and everything. He looks pretty pissed. So I guess he got his boots wet. <laughs> he gets me in. He pulls me in there and then we swim in there. First, first they, oh, first they throw it like, it's a buoy, right? A buoy? They throw a buoy and the buoy's like from here to like, I'm like, where you at? And the buoy's like, I'm like, now y'all just playing with me. I can't swim. You see, I can't swim, right? <laughs> all right, people just let you see it, right? They don't let you all the way in. <laughs> and so finally the guy jumps in and he saves me and I'm like, I mean, I, not to be too graphic, but I exhausted everything in my body. It was just crazy. And I'm laying over there and he's like, 
It's like, why you couldn't, if you, if you couldn't swim, why you got out there? And I'm like, I can swim. What took you so long? That's my question, right? <laughs> At that point in my life, I realized something. Life is about... <laughs> Life is about two things. You have a choice every single day. I'm pretty sure somebody talked about that this weekend. Is you have a choice. And that choice is this. Either you can sink or you're going to swim. You can sink in what? Doubt, fear, failure, all those negative emotions. You can sink in that. You can sink in what people are going to think. You can sink in your past. You can sink in all these things. Or you can swim with one thing, I feel like, and that's faith. With your vision, with your purpose. So I don't want you to answer it right now. But when hard times hit your life, when you're struggling, when you're drowning in your whatever it is in the world, what are you going to do? Life is not about what happens to you. It's about how you respond to what happens to you. So how are you going to respond? Respond with greatness, respond with authority, respond with faith, or are you going to respond with nothing? And a lot of us, we just sit in the same place and we wonder why we're sinking. We sit in the same place of pain and we wonder why we have pain. We sit in the same place of hurt and we wonder why we have hurt. We sit in the same place of not having good people around. We, want, we sit in the same place of misery and we expect happiness. I know this might hurt a little bit, but I have to be truthful. Stop complaining about the things you aren't willing to change. Stop complaining about the things you're allowing to take place. If somebody broke your heart eight or nine times, it's not them. You know who they are. It's on you. Some of y'all ladies in here, I don't know if y'all have your heart broke or God, y'all like. But seriously, you know who they are. Somebody is abuse your loyalty as a friendship. You know who they are. If you want to keep going back to that, you can't change people. I can't change you. I can inspire change. I can influence change, but I can't change you. So what's it going to be? Wrote the vent. You're going to sink or you're going to swim. What I want you to do right now is find your neighbor. And neighbor, if they're not talking with passion, you don't, if, if they're not talking like you believe them, tell them, be like, I don't believe you. You ain't, you ain't serious about that. You ain't about that life, right? But I want you to talk to your neighbor. And tell them what you're going to swim for. What's going to be your why when times get hard? When things aren't going right, what's going to keep you pushing? Can y'all do that for me? Let's take 45 seconds, all right? Turn to your neighbor, stand up on your feet. I want to hear energy and passion, all right? Let's go. Let's play that music. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. About 30 more seconds. If you haven't went, switch out. If you don't believe them, tell them. I don't believe you. Hi. How you doing? My name's Monica. How you doing? I don't know who you are, but I'm loving everything that you're saying. And my mission in life is to work with moms to remind them that they're leaders of their kids every day. I love that. And I love what you're saying. And Thank you. It's making me totally emotional, but I Thank just you. really want to shake your Thank head. you. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right, all right, everybody take a seat. We can sit down, everybody take a seat, let's cut the music. There we go. Everybody take a seat, I like that. A lot of conversations. Oh, y'all didn't want to sit down, okay. It's cool, keep it going. <laughs> there we go. I like that. If you believe your neighbor, say yup. Yup. I, I want to hear some of these. Uh, I like to be inspired. I always say I'm a, I'm a sponge. So you probably see me back here uh, listening to people speak. I'm a sponge. I always like to be a student of life. So I like to be inspired too. So somebody raise their hand for me. And let me know, like, what's the reason why you're going to keep swimming? Right here. White shirt. I swim for my family. I love it. I swim for their future. I love it. I swim for the legacy that they will leave for their children. I love that. And that's a strong why. That's the reason why you, we would never quit. Even when we want to quit on ourselves, when you're doing it for somebody else bigger than you, that's how you know your life is purposeful, when it becomes bigger than you. All right, I appreciate that. Give her a yup. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm, my why is my brother who committed suicide when he was 14 years old. 
and my mom was powerless to stop the domestic violence in our house and I want to help women overcome that powerlessness and become the women that they should be. That's super strong. I admire you for that. I admire you for that. I'll let Jeremy pick them out. See, I don't get mad at him. Um, I'm a Brenda tonight, so one of the things that I got from my life coach was, you know, I talked to him. I had something really important I needed to do, and it was going to change lives and help people heal. And so he said to me, what's it costing you to not do it? And what's it costing those other people for you to not show up and do what you need to bring and only you can bring? And that's my why. I love that. I love that. Thank you. Yup, yup, yup. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Hello. Hello. Hey, Trent. Um, I'm Yvonne. I traveled from LA Port. Um, first of all, so, thank you. I you've, appreciate you. You've brought me out of the darkness, followed you from um, depression. Anyhow, um, my why is living for my kids. I love it. And um, I just want to say, yep, I'm here standing yep. for my three boys. Right. And um, definitely peace in my journey. And um, gosh, this woman right here has a great story too. But anyways, like I just say, um, living the peace and following through of just all the, the life has to offer. I love that. Protect your so, peace all the time. Love you guys all here. It's awesome. been a great, awesome weekend. Yup, 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 yup. Come on, don't give it a hater clap. Some of y'all like, there we go. My man raising this, I gotta get you, man. Yeah, you raising your hand. Last one, for real, for real. I'll sit it all night. Trent, how we doing? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm well. Awesome. Um, I, I really care about the people in my life that have been yeah. there. One of my best friends uh, played football as a wide receiver at University of Washington. Okay. Had a really bad injury his junior year. Went through rehab his senior year and got um, actually on the practice team for the Bengals. Worked his butt off. Didn't pass the physical. I'm from Seattle. Uh, went back and actually made it to the Seahawks. Worked his heart out last year. I mean, pushed harder than I've ever seen him work. Like you, this, this was his dream. This is everything he hoped for. Uh, got on the 53-man roster. Last week, he got cut from the Seahawks. And he's, he's hurting. And uh, I, I told him that you're going to be here. And I don't know if he knows your story, but I just have him connect with me. I felt for so real. composed. That I, I just I knew that I had to I had to say something. Have him connect with me. For real, I mean, that's my heart. And, yeah. and one thing you can tell him, and he might not get it right now, but I always tell him, you know, football is is not who he is; is what he does or yeah. did. You know, and in that path, I always say God will allow you to go through places you don't understand just to bring you to the place where he wants you to be. Yeah. All right. So tell him to reach out to me on I'm my email. I'm going to DM you on Instagram. Okay. Awesome. Right, appreciate cool. you, man. Yeah. Yup. Yup. Yep. Yep. It's real, man. Stand up for a friend that's not even here. That's real. I appreciate you. So we talked about the reality. Let's move along to the release. I'm going to be up here. I'm trying to, hopefully I can give me an extra 30 minutes. <laughs> it's, it's in it. it, it <laughs> they will. They told me so. But it's funny because I remember when I first started speaking about fear, like, I remember this, and I'll just tell the story real quick, just to inspire somebody about fear. Like, I never, I never wanted to be a speaker ever, ever. Like, this was not who I wanted to be. I wanted to be a football player. So if you would say, God told me that you were supposed to be a speaker, I was like, no, God didn't say that. He told you I was supposed to be catching touchdown passes. <laughs> right? But I had a guy, I don't know if you know Dr. Tony Evans, but his son, Jonathan Evans, um, he, he played at Baylor with me, played at Washington with me. And it's funny because a lot of times it takes somebody to, to see something in you that you don't even see in yourself. And at that point, I wanted to be a rapper. Like, my spoken words are still trying to live my rapping days a little bit, you know? But I wanted to be a rapper, honestly. I, I love music. And uh, my mom always told me, that's not what you're called to be. And I was like, okay, here we go with this one, right? But Jonathan came up to me. He said, Trent, I want you to speak at my church. Just out of nowhere. I'm like, what? And at this point, it was like during my, it was with Washington. But I was, like I said, I was living rehabish. I was still rapping. I was like, I can't speak at your church, but I'll rap at it. I was like, you don't know how I'm living. Like, you really don't want me speaking to your church because I don't want them to go, like, search something and be like, you let this guy on stage. And he just laughed and said, I see something you don't see in yourself. 
I said, I've never spoken in front of people. He said, yes, you have. You do it all the time when we go on trips and talk to kids at school. If you can speak in front of kids, trust me, you can speak in front of anybody else. So I'm like, all right. I said, well, let me get three things understood. All right, number one, uh, who am I speaking to? And he said, teenagers. And I was like, nope, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and y'all are laughing, probably know why, because I used to be that teenager. Like somebody on stage, they make you feel like the most boring or interesting person in the world. Like I already know that my parents, okay, on their phone. Whatever. I said, I'm not getting into my speaking career doing that. No, sir. You're not about to take all of my confidence that I built up just to get on stage. No. <laughs> and he said, what, you scared? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, all right. I was like, all right. And I was like, nah, I ain't scared, man, but I just don't want to do it. <laughs> and he says, I see something you don't see in yourself. It's like, all right, I see where he's going with this. And I said, okay, teenagers can't be that bad. I'll just talk about music or something. Some they can relate football. They can relate to that. So I said, okay, teenager. I said, how many am I speaking to? And he said, uh, about 5,000. <laughs> Child, please, right? <laughs> Five. Okay, let me get this straight. <laughs> My very first real speaking engagement. And you want me to speak in front of teenagers and on top of that, 5,000 of them. He's like, yeah, what's the problem? <laughs> he said, what? You scared? <laughs> All right, bro. No, I'm not scared. I just don't want to do it. He said, I see something in you, right? I said, all right, 5,000 kids. I go up there for like two minutes, right? I can, I can, I can wing it. And so uh, I said, okay, last, last question, and we good. I said, how long? He said, he said uh, about five minutes. I said, five minutes? At that point, I was starting to do my rehab time video. I said, you seen my videos. I only got two minutes in me, bro. That's it. <laughs> I said, I can't hold down the stage for five minutes. That seemed like an eternity. And for me, being up here for already 40 is just crazy to me. But I say this to say this and to move on into this next little area. Um, I went on that stage, and I don't know if you ever had a speaking engagement before, especially when you first start out. You know, it's like you prepare all night. You have all your notes down, right? You rehearse it. I did that. Like, I had it down to the T. I was like, I'm going to go out there and kill it. So I get to the stage, and I get there. I get to the, to the venue. And all these kids are screaming and stuff. They have great speakers. I'm like, man, I'm getting nervous. He's, he sees me backstage. He's like, what? Trent, you scared? And I said, like, yeah, I am. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> he was like, don't worry about it. You have your tattoos, your dreads. They're going to just, uh, y'all know what 2 chains is? Yeah. Right? He's like, you're going to think you 2 chains for y'all don't know. Look it up. And I'm like, I look nothing like him. Right? And he laughed. And I said, man, I'm going to go out here and do it. Walked out there. No kidding. Got on the stage, it's like a spotlight. I grabbed the mic, and I forgot everything I was supposed to say, <laughs> right? So I'm like, I got to sink or I got to swim, right? And so at that moment, it's something I do every time before I speak. I say, God, just use me. And to this day, I never felt a crowd or a group of people be that attentive to me. After the, after the show, they were coming to me like, I want to know more about God. I was like, you're at church right now. I should be asking you, all right? <laughs> but that's the moment where I knew this was my purpose. So I walked into my fear. Fear is fake. You know what fear is? Fear is creating a known result from a situation you haven't even went through yet. Have you ever read a roller coaster before? Right, you'd be scared in the mud, but after the roller coaster, you'd be like, yes, woo, that was great, right? Life is like that. Ups and downs is a roller coaster, but it's fun if you enjoy it. Create enough pain with where you're at. If you create enough pain with where you're at, I promise you, you'll go out and do it. If I set a fire under you, I guarantee you'll move. So set a fire, whatever it is for you in your life that's keeping you from moving forward in your life, that fear. The fear, of, the fear of not trying, the fear of not growing, pun intended, the fear of not moving forward is scarier than me. It hurts more than trying and failing. So I have no choice to move if the fear of staying is a lot worse than the fear of moving forward. So if you want to move in your life, I promise you, if you create enough chaos, enough pain, a, a situation, enough leverage in your life, even if it means death, and I'm not talking about physically, I'm talking about spiritually and emotionally, you will move. But a lot of times we don't move on from certain things because we're really not tired of being sick and tired. When you finally get there, you would say the last time is the last time. You don't say next time, you say the next time I'm gone from this situation. And not just relationships and anything, habits, people, friendships, all of that. So realize that with fear. And realize I'm standing in my fear right now. Do I look fearful? Because I conquer that over repetition. So whatever it is that you're scared of, go do it. Go attack it. What's the worst that can happen? Go speak. Go to karaoke. That's how I practice. Somebody left me. We were singing regulators, and they were supposed to do their part, and the Nate Dog part, and I, never mind. I, I, I'm going off topic. 
But moving forward and burning bridges and releasing things, I want you to understand something. In release, it's a big part of your life where we face the reality, we face our truth, what we need to do, and then we go to a release, things we need to release from our life. And I'm going to tell you right now, I talk about this and I, I get two sides. Trent, you help my relationship. That's what I mostly get about 90%. And you have people who hate me and say, Trent, it's your fault. I'm like, how are you blaming my message for your mistake, right? <laughs> I want you to know right here, I'm not trying to end any friendship, any relationship. What I want to do is have dialogue because when I talk about know your circle in a minute, it's like people who came together, it'd be like, you roll with me, but you catching an Uber back, right? They start getting tense and looking at each other, right? No fights in here. But I want you to realize something. There's bridges in your life that need to be burned. And some people say, don't burn bridges. I don't all the way agree with that. Because there's certain bridges in your life that need to be burned because there's certain things your life cannot afford to go back to. Some of us, we expect to operate in greatness and fulfillment, but yet we have all these things that drain us, and we wonder why. It's not rocket science, people. And I know it's hard to let go. I know it's hard to move on. Trust me, but it's a lot harder to live with it. It's a lot harder to go to new destinations carrying the same old baggage. It's a lot harder to reach new peaks carrying the same old dead weight. And I'll tell you this. I know a lot of us are good, strong people. We want to help people all the time, which is great. But teach that person how to fish. Don't keep fishing for them. Don't carry somebody on your back that's capable to walk by your side because you're doing them a dis injustice by having them depend on you when they need to be dependent on God. Amen. So sometimes you got to learn to love people from a distance. I know it hurts, but sometimes you do. So I want you to release everything in your life that keeps you from knowing your worth. What's knowing your worth is simply this. I feel like God has given us worth. If you get in his Bible, his word, he set us apart. You're far more precious than rubies. He has a plan for your life. He has peace for us. He has all these things. We we're created by an awesome God. For some of you, it took nine, ten months, eight months to make you. I don't know what it took. But you were born into this world, and nobody's designed like you. Amen. Nobody's created like you, but yet we are so quick to train our identity for popularity. We are so quick to train in who we are just to please other people. The first, step to happy, the first step to being unhappy is trying to please everybody else. What's the point of gaining the world if that game means you lose yourself? It doesn't add up. So why do we care so much about the opinions of people who can care less about us? Right? right. Yep. Y'all feel that? Say, yup. Yep. So what's your worth? What you were born with, God gave you worth. Worth is not attached to your job. It's not attached to your relationship. Those things are great. Those things add value to you. I agree with that. But at the end of the day, if you lose those things, you shouldn't lose yourself. Too many people lose their life because somebody walks out of their life. If you really knew that maybe God allowed them to walk out so somebody better or some more purposeful can walk in. Some things have to end so better things can begin. I will. You can ask me the question when we do quick Q&A, all right? For sure. She's like, I want to know the juicy stuff. Let me hear that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll definitely tell you about that. A lot of people. And I'll be honest. I'll be transparent. To some people, I might have been that friend too. Just being real. Just growing up in my life. But I want you to know your worth. Realize that God has given you that. Don't let anything take it away. Stop attaching yourself to certain things in this world. Detach yourself. Protect your peace. No, and it's got, things hurt. We're human. I get it. But it's important to know your worth. If you got that, say, yup. Yep. Number two, <laughs> know your circle. Man, I hope I don't talk an hour on this. Know your circle. All right? There's great people in your life, and cherish those people. With me with the NFL, the higher I went, and this is my fault, I started to move away from the people who love Trent for Trent, not Trent the NFL player. But the higher I went and worked my way to the top, there were people, as they say, took the elevator to my success. There were people around me, right? There were people around me. They weren't around me for who I was. They were around me for what I did. So when I hit my rock bottom in life, that's when it got real. I'm thankful for rock bottom. Because it made me see who was real and what was real. It made me make God the rock of my life. Yep. Real situations will expose fake people, so pay attention. So pay attention. When it gets hard, anybody can be in your life when it's sunshine. 
Anybody can be in life when it's attractive, but when your life is ugly, who's going to be there? Look around because those are the people you need to cherish in your life. Because everybody that's riding with you might not be riding for you. Know your circle. Everybody in your boat might not be rowing, but when you're not looking, drilling holes. Know the people that you're around. And I'll tell you right now, it's simple. Ask yourself this question. And I have a video coming out very soon, a spoken word about this, so y'all get a head start. If all you had to offer was friendship, that's it. Nothing else. No titles, nothing else. If all you had to offer was friendship, who would still be in your life? If all you had to offer was friendship, that's it. Love, support, no extras. Who would still be in your life? Who would still be fighting for you? Because those are the people that you need to keep around. Value those people. And when my circle got smaller, honestly, you know, life is funny to me. I feel like, you know, sometimes the best way to add to your life is not to add to it, but to subtract. When my circle got smaller, my vision got clearer. When my circle got smaller, less became more. When my circle got smaller, it was less drama, less gossip, less people talking behind my back. You know, watch the people who bring gossip to you about you, but your name they never defend. I tell people all the time, why are you bringing, what did you say to them? That's what I want to know. Because somebody who truly cares for you will stand up and defend you when you're not there. They'll stand up for you when you aren't able to stand up for yourself. They'll fight for you when you ain't able to fight for yourself. Keep people like that around because you will become what you surround your life around. Who you, surround your, who you consistently surround your life around, that's exactly who you're going to be like. So you show me how you act, I'm going to show you your circle. It's impossible not to believe when you hang around people who believe. It's impossible not to go hard when you hang around people who go hard. Mindsets are very contagious. So they don't have what you want to catch. Move around. Where my people went hiking with me the other day? Right? Mindsets are contagious, right? It's times when we wanted to quit. There's times where it was hard. Somebody threw up, right? Somebody, well, it wasn't us. Somebody got care flighted out, right? Like, what are we doing but what? We kept pushing each other, right? Mindsets are contagious. Get around people who push you out your side your comfort zone in a respectable way. And make sure you're that person that pushes other people outside their comfort zone. If you got that, say, yup. Yep. Say, yup. Yep. Number three, know your truth. Know your truth. Whatever your truth is, know it. Believe it. So when this world tries to make you think something different, when this world tries to feed you a lie that you're not great enough, you're not good enough, you're not beautiful enough, you're not talented enough, you're not this enough, let me tell you something. You will never be enough for somebody who isn't enough for you. You're perfect for the hearts that are meant to love you. So stop doubting yourself. Look in the mirror and appreciate that person in it. You're enough for anybody. And if people make you feel guilty for being you, keep being you. Be you unapologetically. Never feel guilty for growing. Never feel guilty for elevating your life. Never feel guilty for taking your life to the next level. Unfortunately, everybody ain't going to grow and go with you. And it's okay. It doesn't make them a bad person, but everybody's not going to have the same mindset of you, the same vision as you. And stop expecting people to see your vision. We sit there and we like beg people to support us. Watch my video. Do this and do that, which I'm not saying you can't do. There's nothing wrong with that. But stop begging for people to support you. Stop begging for people to get on the same page as you. Stop waiting your whole life for the person that you want to show up to show up. Because sometimes you could be waiting forever and it never happens. The best support you can give is you. Because when you believe in you, when you believe in God, guess what? It becomes contagious. People follow my videos because they know for a fact I believe in what I speak about. Some of us, we don't believe in it. It's just a hobby. We're just interested in it. And we wonder why when times get hard, we turn our back on that. So think about that. Stop begging for support and be your own support system so you can get people around you that truly care about you and you truly care about them. If you got that, say, yup. Yep. So what I want you to do, all right, really quick, 30 seconds. We're going to turn the music back on, get around, find somebody else if you can. Don't move all around the room. But or Actually, keep the same person. Y'all build a strong relationship by now. <laughs> but I want you to tell them something. Maybe it's somebody. You don't have to name, name the name, right, because we don't know who gossips in here, all right? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> But tell them something that maybe you're going to let go of because the question I want to ask you is this too. What are you holding on to that you need to let go of? Mine was football. I was holding on to football out of fear. The fear of who would I be without it, my identity. The fear of how I'm going to pay my bills, take care of my family. But it wasn't until I let go of that that I walked into my purpose. The videos that you see now went viral as soon as I let go of football. How does that work? Because I stepped out on faith and I trust the God with my life. Sometimes you got to get out of the driver's seat of your life because when we're driving our life, we go out of control. But when you put God in the driver's seat of your life, I personally believe anything under his control is never out of control, all right? So tell the person next to you with passion and heart what you're going to do. Get rid of certain things. You're like, maybe it's your own habits. Maybe it's things you do. Maybe it's people, all right? Go tell them real quick. Let's go. Let's go.
Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 forgot, I forgot. Yeah, just, just do that for me. I'll go ahead and advance to so release it. There we go. There we go. Let's go 10 more seconds, 10 more seconds, and then take a seat. Let's everybody sit down real quick. Let me get two people this time real quick. Two people, let me know, right there? All right. Right here, yeah. We get a mic tour. There we go. Hi there, my name is Anne Marie, and I'm so glad to be here. Didn't know I was coming. Call again. Can you stand up? A colleague invited me. I thought it was a real estate conference. <laughs> Little did I know they would speak my language and tell my story. One year terminal cancer diagnosis. I have one year to live, so it's real for me. I was diagnosed with cancer, terminal cancer, four, stage four. I did everything right, ate right, did everything. Had a car accident, neurological problems, caused the cancer in my stomach. I did everything right. I could be mad, I could be angry, but I could release everything that's happened and move forward, and that's what I intend on doing. That's and, incredible. And, and this helped me to do it. I will tell you how real it is that my first speaker was JJ and her issues and all that she's gone through, and I actually was deciding after 25 years of pain and pretending, but getting through it, if I really wanted to do it. Do I really want to be here? And making the decision after hearing her that I did. Because others have gone through worse. And you can get through, but you have to be positive. And so now I want to release the desire to not want to do it and to not need approval from anybody that you may not get. And all the competition, all the jealousy, it doesn't matter. To just be who I am and do what I'm going to do for me and my family and to bless everybody else. Just to let go of all the judgment, be kind, be compassionate, and hold people accountable in a loving way, and just be who I am. And that means I have two buildings that I am working on that I said, God, if you want me to help people, you have to keep me here. Because I, I want to build and develop that Detroit apartment building, and I want to give back to 10 single moms, 10 veterans, 10 disabled, and 10 church people who can oversee it and do affordable housing project. And that's, that's what's gonna keep me here. That's incredible. Yup. 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 Incredible. We're gonna I'm do proud this. Of you. We're gonna get proud it done. And thank you for everything, everything. I have the will to live because of being here. That's incredible. Give it up again. Nothing like that feeling of freedom, man, freeing yourself. And a lot of times, you know, we're our own prisoners. Prison of the mind is the greatest prison you can be in. So to free yourself from that and to realize that and acknowledge that and to stand up and talk, talk about it, uh, that takes a lot of strength. You're strong. You know, I always tell people it's not, strength doesn't happen 
by just being born strong. It happens going through weak moments and hard times. You know, a survivor, somebody that wasn't struggle-free, they just decided to be free from that struggle. And that's what you are. You're a survivor, you're a conqueror, and you're awesome. All right, and use whatever you went through to make your life better and also those that are around you are gonna benefit from your change, all right? Awesome. Hello, my name's Justin. Uh, first, I wanna say thank you, Trent, because uh, I'm here because of you. I bought your program and that's what brought me here, so I appreciate that. Appreciate you, bro. As far as what I need to release, I've had a lot of troubles. I've done the jail thing. I've gone through all the dramas. My biggest thing personally is releasing my need to be accepted by my friends in the street. Right. I grew up with these people. These are, my, these are my blood, the people that I've known all my life. And it's hard to do things different and see them go, oh, bro, you changing. You fake. You ain't, you ain't being real. But I, yeah, know that, I, know that. I know that I'm so much better than what I was. And uh, I, I'm just trying to release that and move forward. Awesome, man. Yup. Man, I, I relate to that so much. Uh, you said Justin, right? I relate to that so much. You got to realize, man, the only people that aren't going to support your change are the ones that can't benefit from it no more. You know, when the benefits leave, that's when a lot of people's loyalty stops. They don't want you to be, of course you change. Yeah, that's why I'm changing, duh, right? When people say you change, say, yes, I have changed, all right? But also, it's funny because I have, my friends say the same thing. Trent, you're going to be a speaker? That's corny. That's stupid. You're going to leave this lifestyle for that? That's whack. What you going to talk about? You're an introvert. You don't like to talk anyway, right? All these things. But those are the same friends, well, not all of them, but most of them now have changed their life because I decided to walk out, walk out on faith and change mine. So be that influence for them. They might not understand. They might not get it. They might not never get it. But at the end of the day, you got to do what's best for you, all right? And your family and your future, straight up. All right, in this last little section, then we're going to do some Q&A. But we talked about reality. We talked about release. And this is repair. Um, I feel like in anything you go through in life, repair is very key. Um, one thing I want to talk about, I really hadn't, haven't had the plan. I didn't plan to. But I just want to talk about forgiveness right quick, just real quick, because... I hear that a lot with moving on and, and breaking free and what somebody did to us. A lot of us are walking around with the pain that our past gave us. And you can see it on people at times. I was that person. And so even Justin, I want to tell you right now, bro, whatever you've been through, you're not your past. You're not. Just because you had some bad chapters, guess what? Doesn't mean your story can't end well. I want you to decide right now, you already decided because you're here. That you decide you're going to write a new chapter and you're going to be the author with God's help, man. And that's what it's about. Keep turning the page. But where forgiveness, understand where forgiveness is, it's not for them, it's for you. Forgiveness is freeing. Because I can promise you this. Without forgiveness, you can move on from the person or situation, but you will never move on from the pain. That's why you have people that are free as far as from the person, are free physically. But mentally, emotionally, they're still there. They're stuck. They're rooted in that situation. They're still crying over a situation. They're still lost. That was me for two years with football. I was still there. I said I'm over it. I was smiling for the camera, but dying behind the scenes. It's going to take digging up those roots. Because a lot of our things go back deeper. As I talked about earlier with the parents, a lot of times it's how we saw our parents, things that happened to us in our past. Maybe somebody told us we weren't going to be good enough, a failure, a teacher, a coach cut you. And we carry those small things with us our whole entire life, and we create this fear of not becoming more because somebody made us feel like we were less. When they just didn't understand our worth, they just didn't understand how special we were. So I want you to grab your shovel, whatever that shovel is, whether it's prayer, whether it's faith, whether it's hard work, whatever it is, your motivation, inspiration, grab that shovel and start digging. Dig up those seeds of doubt. Dig up those seeds of fear. Dig up those seeds of not being good enough. Dig up those seeds of not understanding everything you were created to be and replace those seeds with seeds of faith, with seeds of strength. It's time for you to break the cycle. If you're in your family, you know, one of my things is this, I want to start a new legacy. My parents are great to me, but I want to take that and make it even better. I encourage you to break the cycle, which I know a lot of you guys in here and ladies in here are doing. But we can't keep passing the baton, passing the baton, and expecting things to change. We complain about this generation, but who do you think the teachers are? Us, right? If we want to change the world, 
We got to change ourselves. We got to change our households. Then we change our streets. Then we change our communities. Then we change our cities, states, the, then we, United States. Then we change the world. But it starts with who? You. We can't expect change if we're not making the change. So grab that shovel and start digging. All right, if you got that, say, yep. yep. Build your mindset. How do you build your mindset? Struggle builds your mindset. Everybody who spoke of her, I'm sure they gave you a story where they've been through stuff. They've been through an obstacle. They've been through a challenge. They hit a brick wall. They hit their rock bottom. But somehow that nasty, uncomfortable, I hated at the time stuff built who they were. How does that work? Because without strength, without pain, there's no strength. What's, this, what's the foundation for strength? It's pain. Who works out in here? Right? My man right here. Where you get stronger at? Rep 1 or rep 10? Rep 11, right? Some of y'all didn't get that. He does extra. <laughs> do you do extra? Absolutely. There, absolutely. Here we go. I like that. Give me a yup. You get, stronger, you get stronger at rep 10. Why? Because that's when you want to quit. On the climb of the top. That's why I love hiking mountains. You get stronger at the top. You get stronger when it gets, when the peak, when the, I mean, when the, when the climb gets very steep and you push through it. If you never went through anything, how can you tell people to get through it? Have you ever, let me ask you this question. Have you ever took directions from somebody that never been to the de destination before? <laughs> like, I know where to go, dog. I know where to go, Trent. Look, this is how you get here. Well, these days we have like our iPhones, but like back in the day, maybe when we had like, uh, before we even had, what was the thing online? Uh, MapQuest? Yeah, right? That one. I was, I was young enough for that, right? Or old enough, should I say, for that. But have you ever took direction from somebody who don't know where they're going? If you have, what usually happens? You end up lost, right? It's like somebody giving you a map to a trail that they never hiked before. And a lot of times in life, we do that. We listen to people who never been through what we've been through, who never was there for our struggle, who don't understand our vision, our mindset, never took the time to understand. The reason why people hate, the reason why people criticize, because it's a lot easier to give that than to understand the person. It's a lot easier to judge somebody than to understand the reasons for somebody's path. I can't judge somebody because if I would have went through what they went through, my mindset might be exactly the same. So you have to realize what's your purpose. You know, purpose isn't something you search for. I hear people say that a lot. Well, I believe. I'm searching for my purpose. Where are, where are you searching for it at? You are purpose. Do you realize that? Your purpose is you. Rehab time is not my purpose. It's an avenue for me to live my purpose and to be everything God created me to be. So stop searching. Stop chasing things. Because when you're chasing something, I've always taught that if something that wants to stay there and be, and be there in your life, it shouldn't be running away. <laughs> you don't want to be there. Or it. That doesn't mean be lazy or not work hard, but I feel like when you're truly living your purpose, you become a magnet for certain things and certain people that you become attracted to. How me and Dean met, just the story with me and Dean. I mean, I met a friend of ours named Ted and Tony, and we went through all this, and we happened to be at an event, and we met like that, and I'm here. Your purpose, your passion will make room for you, but you have to trust it and you have to believe it. Stop chasing things that you know for a fact don't move your heart. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be a successful person that's empty inside. And there's nothing worse than that. Nothing. I know millionaires, billionaires. Well, now I don't know billionaires yet. <laughs> millionaires, a lot of millionaires that are lost inside. Even with football. You know, I know we're here to make money. I'm not telling you not to make it. I definitely, money isn't everything, but when you're an entrepreneur, it's a definitely a lot of something. But don't let that be the controlling force of your life. Because you'll realize when you catch it, you'll never be satisfied with it. And you'll realize that it doesn't, it does buy you happiness. But what it doesn't do is bring you joy. And joy works off of lack and abundance. Joy is finding appreciation to everything, whether it's big or it's small. Joy is living your impact, living your purpose. If you got that, say, yup. Yeah. And last two real quick. Building your faith. How I build my faith, for me, faith means believing the odds are beatable even when the odds say it's impossible. How I build my faith is I show myself that it's real. I dare you. I dare each and every one of you when you leave here this weekend. Whatever thought, idea you have, I dare you to show yourself that it's real. 
I dare you to go attack your impossibilities. You know the only impossibilities that exist? Huh? Are the ones you create? That's it. Everything was once impossible until somebody did it. And don't let people place their impossibilities on your life. What they couldn't do has nothing to do with what you can do. What they couldn't be. Like, Trent, you're not going to be a football player. You know, everybody who was telling me I couldn't be it never was it. That's ironic. You get around people like this room and speakers, they're going to tell you what you can do because they know it's possible. But make it. My challenge to you when you leave here this week, and I send this out a lot of times in my email group, and some of you might have got this, but I challenge you to do something. Don't kill yourself, okay? Don't be like, Trent told me to do it, and I'm in the hospital. No, don't do that. <laughs> be smart. I <laughs> drown. I challenge you to go do something that you once thought was impossible. Maybe it's walking, and I challenge you to do a physical activity because physical activity brings a lot. So maybe it's running, maybe it's three, four miles, maybe it's a walk around the block, maybe it's whatever it may be for you. Maybe it's joining a boot camp, maybe it's going to run a marathon, whatever. I challenge you to do something or sign up for something that shows you that it's possible because once you show yourself that it's possible in that area, it becomes contagious throughout your whole entire life. And then you realize that you're a lot stronger than what you think. You realize that your limits are a lot further than what you thought. So I challenge you to at attack your impossibilities this week. Find, some, find somebody to hold you accountable and go do it, all right? Even if, you, even if you don't make it all the way, at least you try and keep going till you actually do it. If you got that, say, yep. yep. And last but not least, build your heart. Build your heart. Finding the strength to go on even when everything else says you have nothing left. And I want to take this time right here when I talk about heart is be who you are when nobody's looking, when people are looking. You know, one way I make my decisions in life, I always tell myself, if I was the only person in this world, which would never happen, but if I was the only person in this world, would I still do this? Would I still take this opportunity? Would I still uh, go to this speaking engagement? Would I still uh, go with this idea? Because it lets me know that if I would do it, if nobody else was there, it means something to me. Be who you are authentically at you. You're custom made. Stop following the crowd when you were born to lead it. Stop that. Stop fitting in when you were born to stand out. Trust me, I know, it, I know it hurts to make people feel uncomfortable. I had that guilt in my life. I call it successful survivor's guilt, whatever it may be. Because everything was going right for my life, but the people around me, not so good. So I started to feel cursed for my blessings. And that's one of the most internal battle, hardest battles you ever have to fight, when you think that your blessings are cursed. But I realized something. I can't live my life like that and I have to free myself. So I want you guys to free yourself and give love to this world. What's going on right now in this world is, is pitiful in America. And I'm going to sit up here and, and just say this, not trying to persuade anybody with anything, but the answer to everything is love. Amen. And understanding. Yeah. Trying to understand, trying to put yourself in that person's shoes. But we live in a society now where everybody wants to be right. What's the point of being right if still everything goes wrong? Just like in relationships. So spread love, don't spread hate, don't spread opinions with no solution. Make the thing, make the situation better because it starts with you, all right? Everybody get on your feet for a second. And I'm gonna leave you guys with this. Rehab time? There we go. Can we get that music playing? There we go, there we go. How y'all feeling, y'all feeling good? All right. I want you to remember, can you turn my mic, y'all hear me good? Yes. Okay. I want y'all to remember three things, all right, when y'all leave here today. Number one, never forget who you are, all right? Number two, never forget what you're trying to accomplish in your life. And number three, never forget number one and two. If you got that, say yup. Yeah. If you got that, say yup. Yeah. I want you to understand, when you leave here, this event, when you go back home, it's gonna be people, it's gonna be opportunities, it's gonna be, you're gonna be presented with something. Presented with negativity, presented with hate, maybe it's positivity, but I want to focus on that. Just remember how special you are. It's not about what anybody says about you. It's not about what you've done or what you did. It's not about your past. You're special because you were created to be special. You're uniquely designed as nobody's built like you. That journey that you're on, guess what? The path might not be perfect. I don't know nobody's path that's perfect. But that imperfect path can lead you to the perfect purpose for your life. So you keep climbing. When it gets hard, 
You keep going when it's struggling. You keep pushing on even when nobody's around you because sometimes the journey, is, the journey is lonely. But that doesn't mean it's wrong. I believe in you. Every speaker on this stage that's talked has believed in you. Now it's time for you to believe in yourself, even on a higher level. It's time to take your life to a higher level, next level. What does that look like? Feel that for a second. What does that look like? What does that feel like? Relationships, spiritually, mentally, physically, if you took your life to a next level, not only how much your life will benefit from it, but just think about the people around you. And it's there for you. Growth is accessible to all of us. We just gotta make a decision to go get it. Like I tell you guys at the end of every single video, you know what it starts with? It starts with you. Y'all keep moving forward, let nothing hold you back. You LB be it, live it, breathe it, be it, and you better not let this world take your smile. Everybody smile for me. Yeah. Conquer your struggle and create new peaks. Thank you so much, I appreciate y'all. Make some noise for yourself. Here we go. Oh, great. He brought, he brought the beat back. He like, come on, let's keep going. Um, we're going to do some Q&A real quick. All right? And I'll just tell you right now, I'm a, I'll be totally transparent. If I don't know the answer, I'm not going to make one up. All right? And so I'm always, if somebody in here has experienced that and might know the answer, feel free to join in. All right? Let's take a few questions. Just want to say thank you very much, by the way. Uh, really good words. Um, how do you know that you are in the right place? Well, the simple answer, and the answer that I really believe is peace, man. You know, it's a peace that, with my beliefs with God, man, that surpasses all understanding. You know, I've been, I've been in places where I had celebrity, where I had money, but I didn't have peace. Uh, I've been in a place where I've had everything that a human being, the American dream, you would want to have, but I didn't have that peace. And so in my life, even in the most chaotic situations, I still have a peace. I know I'm at where, I want to at where I'm at. I know this is my purpose because it doesn't just benefit me. I get fulfillment from other people. And so in your life, when I say protect your peace, of course you're going to go through things that you're up and down. You're going to go through life. But you know you're in the right place when you can come back to that peace at the end of the day. All right? So I hope that helped a little bit, but that's just with me. What does peace look like to you? Uh, what does it look like? It looks like, honestly, it's a feeling. Um, I wouldn't say it necessarily looks like anything. I mean, it could look like this room right now. I'm at peace. You know, it could look like hiking a mountain. It can look like doing yoga, you know, but it's a feeling that I get that I'm not worried about anything. I'm detached. You know, when I, when I run my, my trails, I always say, when I get into these trees, nothing else matters. Nothing else exists except my thoughts, my mind, and my relationship with God and me better in myself. That's what it feels like to me. And nothing can disturb it. Even in a crowded room, I'm still at peace with myself. And so I encourage you to to work on things that bring you peace. Get away from things, because I mean, it's hard to, to build your peace if you're around chaos every day. One thing I always do, you can follow me on Snapchat, y'all see me doing it all the time, I go hike, I go walk, I get away. I spend time with myself every morning, I meditate, I pray, I go do yoga, I do all these things to connect me with God, connect me with my thoughts, because the biggest battle you're ever gonna fight is in here. And if you're not right in here, it's hard for you to have peace, right? In an unstable world, it's hard to be stable in an unstable world. Thank you, mm -hmm. God bless. Yeah. Hey, Trent. Hello. From where I'm standing, it looks like you're going to make a much bigger difference on stages than on the football field. So thank you. That's love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You mentioned that you were going to tell us about your view of haters. <laughs> okay. Uh, anybody have haters in here, right? Yeah, everybody has haters, right? Like, you don't have that many haters. Um, so, I'm trying to be positive about this. <laughs> We've all been a hater before. Even me, when I got cut, I was like, Peyton sucks, right? <laughs> Reggie Wayne is terrible. Because I was in a bad position in my life. So, that's the first thing I want you to understand about hate. Number one is that, understand where hate comes from. Hate comes from a hurtful place. Somebody is hurt. And the easy thing to do, even in my, if you go on my Facebook comments, you see me get crucified every day, I'm sure. But 
I realized, you know, when I first started, when I was insecure with myself, I would like type back, type back messages to people. I was like, I'm good with words, so you want to send a shot at me, I'm going to send something back right back at you, right? But I was trying to win a battle because I was insecure. When you become more secure, you understand that people only hate because they hurt. And so I started to reach out to these people and say, you know what, I love you, brother. I love you, sister. I'm praying for you. And they'd be like, no, you don't understand. I don't like you, right? And I was like, no, you don't understand. You like me, you just don't know it yet, right? <laughs> and we go back and forth, and a lot of these people are my biggest supporters, right? So a hater is this. A hater is somebody who admires what you do. They just got a different way of showing it. <laughs> That's it. Because think about it. If they truly, think about the things you truly hate, like certain foods, you don't even pay any attention. If you truly hated something or someone, which is a strong word, why are you following them on every social site? Right? So think about that. Jealousy, same thing. It's just when your life reminds somebody of what they don't have. Envy, exactly the same thing. So when it comes to hate, realize where it comes from. And we, we like, I've, I've realized that, and so like I, uh, extinct the word hater, and I came up with a new word. They're just confused supporters. So that's what they are. Oh, okay, right here? Cool. I have a lot of difficulty balancing control and surrender. Okay. If I try to control my life, what happens is sometimes I try to control yeah. my emotions, and then my emotions don't work well. Sometimes if I try to surrender to get my emotions flowing, happens is I surrender a little bit of the ambitions and things that help me succeed in life. How do you balance control and surrender in your life? Um, the word balance, that's a good word. Um, because, you know, a lot of people might not agree with me, but I feel like, I feel like balance is something that you can't achieve in an unbalanced world. I feel like a lot of us, we fight to find balance. And this might just be me. We fight to find balance in everything. But how can you find balance in an unbalanced world, right? That's when the peace comes in place. And so with me, I've learned to find my balance, and I'm going to get to your question, dive deeper. But I learned to find my balance in giving everything to everything I'm involved in. So when I'm away from my family, right, I feel guilty when I'm back there. I want to be with my family. And then when I'm with my family, I want to be inspiring people. So I drive myself crazy, right? It's like, ah. Uh, but I realize that I can't necessarily control that. But what I can control is giving my everything in those moments and creating epic memories from those moments. And so with you, I would ask you, what's your... What's your overall goal in life you know like what do you want to be remembered by what do you I mean what drives your life because I think when it comes to surrendering and control I think it has a lot to do with it like with myself I surrender it all like I've surrendered walking away from football I've surrendered um, certain relationships I surrender it all just just so I can follow God because honestly with me following God has led my life to a place where he needs me to be and touching millions of lives because of him not because of nothing special I do but something special about the God that I serve. And so I would ask you that, like, what is it that, that you're trying to control in your life or what is it that you want to be at the end of the day or that you live for? No, I, I, want, to, I want the answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it, you can think, I mean, not to be a, you know, just whatever, let's dialogue. You know, a lot of things is obviously living to the spark of my life, honoring it, yeah. honoring love. Yeah. Right? Not being distracted by all the other feelings and perceptions of the world, right? Right. Um, just being able to see somebody and relate with them as living, right? right. As opposed to anything else. So that's my purpose. I didn't even, I didn't even know my purpose until I just said that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It's um, amazing what we know. So, so I, I guess the. I'm just. Let, Things are trying to fall into place. Let, let, let me, let me, I feel like life works in four stages. Um, and I think you've heard Tony talk about this, if you follow Tony, or a lot of people talk about this, but I really feel it's true um, when you just dissect it. I feel like it's about what it means to you, right? What it means to you control, controls how you feel about it. How you feel about it controls what you do about it, and what you do about it controls what you get, right? And so a lot of times when our emotions are bad, our emotions are all over the place, it's usually because the meanings we give in certain things. I always say perspective is your power, your prison. I mean, you can find two people in the exact same situations. You can have the exact same situations, exact same environments, and one person uses that environment as an excuse not to do anything with their life, but another person uses that as an excuse to do everything with their life. What's the difference? It's the meaning they gave certain things. So be very cautious on the meanings you give certain things and people in your life in certain, in certain 
in certain experiences because we have to go through experiences to become better. And so for me, everything in my life means strength, everything. I don't care if it's the most painful experience ever. It means strength because I'm going to come up out of that thing and I'm going to be stronger than I was before I went in there. All right? So check the meanings that you've given things and that'll definitely help you with your, but you can't control your emotions, right? But what you can control is how you respond and what you do with it. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, keep on, we can talk. Okay, so, yeah, but if I control, here's the, here's the cycle I get into. If I try to control too much about how I respond, sometimes what happens is I actually end up controlling my emotions and then they shut down. Like, I don't wanna, I get really angry, but I'm like, I'm not an angry person. I'm gonna be nice to this person. I'm gonna respond right, in a healthy way. Right, but that's the thing, you acknowledge it. Right? Yeah. You acknowledge, at least you acknowledge, some people don't understand it, but I think a first step of power is being able to acknowledge when something, you're human. Yeah. Right? You're going to get angry. You're going to get upset. You're going to get, I get depressed at times, it's honest, but I don't stay there. I get up out of, I acknowledge it, Trent, what are you doing? And I find, so I call it my, my exit strategies, right? I ain't going to lie, like whenever I go to a place now, like I look for exits just in case danger happens, right? <laughs> and I know where to get out. And so in my life, it's the same thing. Develop exit strategies for yourself. So when you, those emotions arise, you know, okay, I'm going to this Bible scripture. Okay, I'm going on this hike. Okay, I'm doing this and doing that. So you don't stay there. The problem why people sit in depression or sit in suffering because they stay there. That's a choice, right? The emotions sometimes, if I told you, hey, you, la, 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 you're going to be angry, right? But you can say, you know what? I'm not going to allow this person to get the best of me. That's strength. And so don't make it harder than what it is, man. I think, you got the, I think you got the right answer because you, you're acknowledging and you're knowing. Thank you. All That's right? awesome. Thank awesome. you. Yep. Hey, hey uh, Trent, I was going to ask the question, but the, the young lady back there, she asked the question I was going to do it for the group. About the hater? Yeah, about the hater. <laughs> you said to remind you for the group. But, um, hey, uh, we met a few months ago in Dallas, and uh, yep. as soon as we connected, it was just I felt that connection. And I just want to thank you for allowing yourself to just – let God use you and the universe to support you and to give you the, the gifts and the knowledge and information to flow through you. I experience it. I, get, I, I, I can't explain it when I see it, but it's just hardwired inside of me to just know that those things just happen, that those, those little synchronicities, those coincidences, those conversations, just whatever happens when you allow yourself to just let go and just be who you are. I just want to thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Love. Love. <laughs> I'm gonna get to your question too. Who had that question? I remember. I remember yours. All right. I'll, I'll end with that one. Hi, Trent. Hmm? Um, I'm Magdine. I have a quick question. What's up? How do you know um, you forgave, and how do you let go? Of can, can you paint the picture a little like, bit better for me? When um, something some things hurt more than others. Right. And um, if you have uh, been through something you feel like it affected you a lot. Right. How do you know you forgave the person? How do you know you let it go? And how do you know that you really moved on? Because it's always going to be in the corner. Right, yeah. I feel like that definitely. I mean, you're human. I mean, there's times where I remember certain things, you know. You're not necessarily going to forget certain, t especially when it's a hurtful or a painful or just a, even a happy experience, right? You're not going to forget those. But it's hard to forget certain things in your life. But it was like I was telling him, it's about acknowledging and understanding that and keep working through it. I would say you know you forgave when you no longer have hate for that person, when you want the best for that person. And that's I think when you know you truly forgave, when you have no malice in your heart, you really pray for them and you want them to succeed. And you gotta understand this too about a lot of times we want closure. And a lot of times closure is something that we can't get from people, right? You might not get the apology that you want, but you have to understand again what that person is going through. A lot of times it's not about you or what you did. I'm not trying to make it blame about the other person. Sometimes it might be, but a lot of times it's about what that person is going through, their own personal things. You just happen to be the target practice for that person. So when you start to understand that, you start to realize that you don't take it as personal. You start to pray for that person. And at the end of the day, closure, the best closure you can get is moving on with your life and let your future show you that you deserve something better because when your future gives you that better, you're thankful that you're no longer where you used to be. So with football for me, like now, I'm thankful for that. At that time, I was, what? My life is over. But I'll tell you this. God will allow you to lose everything you think you need just to show you at times it was nothing that you never needed. Don't lose your life because something or someone leaves your life, all right? All right.
How are we doing on time? Okay, cool. What we got? Right here? Okay. Yeah, cool. Hi. Um, How are you doing? Doing good. My name's Amanda. Um, I've closed off my circle so much <laughs> that I feel like I have no support in my life. Okay. Even when I know I can support myself. Mm -hmm. But I've dealt with a lot of people that have hurt me and burned me. Right. How do you let people into that new circle? Yeah, it's, it's tough. And I'm right with you. I'm right with you at a point in my life. I know exactly what you're going through. <sighs> one, 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 I guess one phrase that you could keep in your life that will help is, I like to say, and I'm gonna dive in deeper, but I like to say, don't let the hearts that didn't love you keep you from the ones that will. And so many times we make people pay for mistakes they didn't make. So many times we judge all, even what's going on in this country, by the actions of some or a few. And it's not fair to the people that want to be in your life, that love you for you, and it's not fair to your future, right? It's only holding you captive by allowing those people. And honestly, your circle, maybe, maybe it's time for you to go through a period of long. I don't know how long you've been going through that, but some, my period of loneliness at rock bottom, it hurt. It's like, where is everybody at? And people want to be in my life, but I'll push them away. My mom, everybody, I'm good, I'm fine, I'm fine. Well, really, I wasn't. But I realized this. Sometimes it takes learning how to be perfectly lonely or alone, if you want to use that word, just so God can show you what being perfectly loved feels like. I realized once I built my relationship with him at that moment that nobody could take that away from me. And it built up a strength inside of me that carried me through. And so I want you to trust again because that's what you're, you're in control of. And I know it's hard, but give your trust. And then you know, like you know the, the, the formula when you see people abusing it. And then maybe it's time to do surgery and maybe cut those people out, whatever it may be. But give your trust, love again, you know, because you deserve it. You don't want to have those situations or people keep you in a prison forever because everybody's not like that, all right? I'll be praying for you for real. I know it's a struggle, I know it's tough. Hey. And, and I know being here, you know, I see hugs and around you, so these seem like great people. I don't know who they are, but I'm sure you made some great people, <laughs> great people here. And, you know, network with, with like mindsets, you know, I mean, even my friendships with, with Dean and, I mean, a lot of people, honestly, Ethan, a lot of people, um, I never would have thought, you know, we don't look like we would be best friends, you know, just looking off the, you know, let's be real, all right? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but... Not saying we're best friends, but with like mindsets. And I learned that as I got older. It's not about the people who, who look like me or, or can make me more cool or vibe better or whatever. It's about, it's about getting around people that have like mindsets and people that can challenge you to grow. And so I encourage you to find some people that you can just connect with. And you don't have to be best friends with them at first. Just let them in a little bit, right? It's like when somebody comes in your house, like if you're like me, I look first and see what they got. <laughs> Then after a few weeks, you can start coming in my house, right? So just try it like that. <laughs> All right, one more. All right, yep. Okay, I, um, my name is Lisa. What's up, Lisa? Yep, yep. I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I have spent my whole life caregiving. Yeah. And Long story short, I started caregiving at eight years old. Right. And I got this caregiver thing in me, and I'm always trying to care for people. That's incredible. But I have a problem where I'm caring for people that either don't care for themselves or that are hurting me, and, um, and then I get burned out, and I don't know how to stop helping people. Right. And um, you're incredible. I mean, first of all, like that's an incredible trait. And I would never tell you to stop helping people, but I'm going to dive into what you're talking about in a minute. It's so I, I had to start cutting people off. Mm -hmm. And and I, I, I'll be honest, some of it hurt. But then I had this guilt. You know, it's, it's this guy. He's like really sick, heart disease, everything. I mean, he's just so sickly. But he he got something wrong. And and he'll. <laughs> He'll, you know, curse at me and yell at me. And, and my friend is like, why are you still helping him? 
You know, mm -hmm. and I'm like, because he needs somebody. He right. doesn't understand all the medical ins and outs, and I do. And I'm, you know, and yeah, mm -hmm, whatever. But the thing is, is that at the same time, I got a past of, of domestic violence and rape and all, you know, from seven years old on up. And so it's like, when he does that, he stirs up my, my PTSD, and I keep going back to help. And so this friend that I, that he's, he's been just the godsend, he started advocating for me. No, stay away from her. You're disrespectful. You hurt her feelings, you know. And so now I'm, I'm working on trying to set up those boundaries for myself. Right. You know, but he helped me to see from February to August, he's been just there, just making sure that nobody walks all over me and helping me to see. And then, of course, uh, I got your course. <laughs> and, I, and, and that got me thinking, too. But, um, and then I volunteered at the domestic violence shelter in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I got a lot there. And so I'm getting stronger. I'm getting there. But the thing is, is that when you have to let go of those people, I think it was stop breaking your own heart. When you have to let go of those people that used to be good to you, but now they're no longer any good for you. You know, it's like, oh, I've been knowing him since I was 15. And, and uh, yeah, whatever. Whatever he was like for those first 20 years, he's not that way now, because I'll be 51 next month, and I'm proud. But I need to, I need to be able to let go, you know, and, and, um, and, and a, a friend of mine that's like 20 years older than me, I don't know what happened to his personality, but he used to be protective and saving, and now he's like the most emotional and verbally abusive person ever, you know, and so that's okay, what yeah. I need. I, you know, that's why I mentioned. You okay, know. awesome. Um, a couple of things. Number one is, and then you talk about moving on, and first of all, like what you're doing is nothing wrong. You see the good inside of people, and I mean, everybody in here has a good heart. You're naturally going to see that, and you're going to give chance after chance after chance, and I'm even like that at times, you know, but it comes to a point when you're, you're saying no to yourself so much, it stretches you out because you're saying yes to everybody else and that person. Um, one thing I would tell you is, you know, sometimes, you know, you talked about still seeing somebody at, you know, 15 years ago. A lot of times why we can't move on is because we're still stuck in how we first met that person, right? So their identity is, <laughs> even though they're acting a certain way to us in our mind, our identity is still stuck by how they used to treat us because they first gave us pleasure. They were first protecting us. They were first there. And so we hold on to that uh, subconsciously. And so it's hard to move on. So as soon as they present something that might spark that pleasure again or might say something nice, we go right back and we're pulled back. But you have to understand people's patterns because words lie, actions do lie too. Uh, I want y'all to know that. But patterns don't. Somebody's pattern will definitely show you who they are. I always say, I'm not concerned about how you treat me because if you want to be back in my life, then you're going to do what it takes. Come on, let's be real, all right? They do everything they can take to get back, and when they back, they do everything they can take to push you away, all right? Push and pull. But at the end of the day, I look at the pattern, how you treat other people. If you still have the same habits, if you're still doing everything else, because if you're still doing everything else, you really truly hasn't changed. And so I would definitely challenge you to get down to the real identity of that person. If that person is pain in your life, say they're pain. Say what they're giving you. They're not pleasure, right? They're pain, and you change that. I mean, it's just like I would say, and it's simple. You have, to, you have to do that process over and over. If I gave you a cell phone, right, we're addicted to our cell phones. A lot of us are, right? Even myself at times, right? But if I put that cell phone in your hand and you touch that phone, cell phone that you love so much, you got electrocuted like three times in a row. Would you pick up that phone again? No, right? Because you know the real identity of that. And it's kind of, it's no different when labeling people in your life. And I'm not gonna tell you to push away everybody. I'm not gonna tell you not to be friends with everybody because that's a lonely life. But at the same time, you have to be very careful and mindful of who, the, who you're dealing with. My mom told me this and I'll end with this. She said, you can't change people, Trent, but what you can do is plant the seed in their life that will help them change. And sometimes with people, it's this quote, I can't remember the guy's name, but he talked about a flower and he's like, you know, a flower, uh, when a flower doesn't bloom, it's not the flower's fault, it's the, 
It's the environment the flower's in. And it's so true. Some people will never bloom until they get out the environment that they're in and the situation that they're in. And so it's all about planting seeds. You have to be content with planting a seed in their life. My mom planted seeds in my whole entire life and my dad. Those seeds didn't grow until I was 26 years old. But she kept planting seeds, planting seeds. But you can't sit there and help a person that doesn't want to be helped because people, as hurtful as it sounds, people will bring you down faster than you can lift them up. And so you have to be good with letting go, giving it to God and say, I planted seeds in your life, but I can't be around that and set those boundaries. Principles. You have those, right? Y'all have principles? My principles make my decisions. Straight up. If it goes against my principles, it's a no. So I'll be like, I didn't tell you no, my principles did. Right? <laughs> and if people can respect your principles, they deserve your loyalty. So think about that. All right? Hope that helped. We good? Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all. Y'all are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. You're awesome. Brother. Thank you, man. Let's go, everybody. Thank you. Hey, is that guy awesome or what? Let him hear you back there. Stay standing for a minute. And do you see how? Do you see how polite he said that he's friends with a little white guy? Did you see how nice he said that? He's one of the dearest people in my heart. I knew that's why I wanted to have him last. Was he the perfect choice for the end of the day? Has this been a great event? All right, guys, while you're standing, I want to do something really... We haven't, if you notice, the spirit of the growth event. We allowed you guys, to, we brought what we thought were the best speakers on the planet. Man, did we have a great variety? So I want to do something while you guys are standing. I want to do one more push. If you guys, who wants to come next year? Who would like to learn a little more from Trent? Okay, so this is the time I'm going to call the action and push you guys. We, we created something special with Trent. You know, we, because Trent and I became friends, we got him down to my studio in Arizona, and we created a great car, course we call the Five Hours to Freedom with Trent, where he goes through uh, reality, release, repair, restore, and rebuild in relationships. What you got in an hour and a half, imagine having a five-week course with Trent. So we got Trent's course, and I'd love to encourage you guys to go to the back and get that course. But here's what we're doing. Next year's event, if you get Trent's course, which we're selling today for 197 bucks, we'll give you the two tickets for next year. It's the cheaper to go get Trent's course and get tickets for next year. I'll throw in the winning state of mind. And everybody who gets Trent's course right now, we're doing something we just decided before Trent came out. Go get your receipt and come backstage and get a picture and hang out with Trent and I in the back. So if you go over the back right now, get his course, 197 bucks, you get two tickets. Go run, that's okay, you can run. Set the stage. No, go get his course, uh, get his course, get two tickets for next year, get my winning state of mind course, and then show this fine gentleman, he's pretty big too, so you gotta make sure you got your receipt, and come back and hang out with Trent and I. Guys, um, besides that, I'm really, this has been an honor and a privilege to serve. This, this anchored my next 20 years in this event more than anything I've done. We've been working our butts off to create growth, to get the business started, to change lives, to make all these great connections. And this really concreted it for the rest of my life. This is, growth will be my mission, my vision, and my purpose, as well as Ethan and Brendan. So thank you. Thank you as much as I thank you. And uh, Ethan, why don't you come out? And how about, how about this guy, Ethan Willis? I have to tell you, Ethan is, Ethan is our operations guy. It's me and Brendan usually out there doing video on stage. <laughs> Ethan's just in the office, just getting stuff done, just taking care of business, hiring. All of a sudden, we come out in the opening day. He's like, I'm going to go introduce everybody. And I'm like, oh, you know, he's going to go out. Of and me and Brendan are in the back like, I, I hope he'll be okay out there. <laughs> so, and I look out and me, I look literally, he's dancing, he's break dancing here. And I looked over at Brendan and he was looking at, the, you can see the big screen from behind. And I looked over at Brendan and he was literally like this. <laughs> we were in total shock. And I think it's been such an incredible asset, the energies that we have together and what we've created. And again, thank you guys all. It's been awesome. It's been awesome. Thank you guys. This has been an amazing, amazing time with you. I'd like to uh, kind of end the day in the event the way we began it today. And I want to say all of these people that are in this room, this whole event that's been put on, 
I want to give gratitude to the team that has made this happen. And so I want, before you clap, there's actually one person who's run this whole thing, and he's the most quiet, humble man that you want to realize. I want to give, you guys love this event, and we can give gratitude and love for someone who's been waking up at 3 in the morning, panicking, make sure everything is right. It's Carrie Inouye in the back, in the black shirt right there. Love, man. Love. Carrie, you've done awesome. You've done awesome. This is the result of your work, man. This is the result of your work. I want to give up to Brian Hatch, who's back there as well. Jeremy Gabbert, who's working a lot with the team right here. This guy looks like Tim Tebow. <laughs> and the whole rest of the growth team that's been here. Too many to name. Thank you for putting on this awesome event. Guys, we love you. We will see you at the next growth event. Take our love with you. And we'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much.